I was always very curious about the stories behind the big dirt bike companies. And when I had to look more into the companies and the models to do the Steps to Podium Buyer's Guide, I decided to do this new series of videos. At these behind the scenes, I'll tell you more about the story of the main companies in the off-road community and explore where they're heading by interviewing people from inside a company. And we'll start with the fastest growing dirt bike company in the world, Sherco. Extensively upgraded and revived frames, chassis, bodywork, as well as engine. Sherco is no stranger to the off-road community, especially if we're talking about trials, where the brand started. In 2016, Sherco even won the World Enduro Championship, showing us that they are here to stay and leave a mark. Sherco's founder and current CEO, Marc Tessier, was a professional trials rider in his younger years, so he always had a deep connection with the sport. He decided to create Sherco in order to extend his passion beyond riding and start building motorcycles able to measure up against the best in the sport. The company started small and is now growing to a semi-industrial size, but its philosophy remains the same, as Thomas Tessier explains. We want to be more of a Ducati of the off-road than a Japanese brand that make a units and units of different kind of products. Both are doing a good job, it's just the philosophy. We prefer to do less quantity but good product. This is not that we want to be a Ferrari, you know? <laughs> and to do a super limited quantity. It's just that we want to be, uh, want to create nice products, but ourselves will purchase. <laughs> because it's, uh, we are speaking to humans, not numbers, you know? Yeah, it's yeah. Uh, the product and all the thing around. And uh, you must share an experience with people, not uh, just share a, a, a price. This is why uh, if you see the, the product that we sell right now, a big majority is a factory product. But it's more yeah. expensive in the market. For sure, there is good equipment on a, on a product and all. But the people, they want to, they want to have a, a nice product and they want to have nice friends and they want to clean the head on the, on the weekend. It is, we are, my word internally is we are selling um, uh, psychologue. We are ah. selling psychologue on wheels, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, a shrink, a shrink on wheels. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's that uh, because uh, me, when I ride the bike on the weekend, it clean my head. Everyone need to clean the head on the on the weekend. But let's go back to when it all started. In 1999, Marc Tessier bought the image rights of Boltaco, a famous Spanish two-stroke bike manufacturer at the time. They decided to call their first bike Boltaco Sherco. Why Sherco? Well, it was a combination of the word Sherpa, a famous model bike from Boltaco, and the last syllable of the name Boltaco. Hence, Sherco. Later on, they decided to change the name of the brand to Sherco to make things a bit more simple. And that's how Sherco was born. Either way, they released the Bultaco Sherco 250 with a 250cc two-stroke Bultaco engine, aluminium frame and all the best parts that a trials bike could be fitted with at the time. In the same year, for the first time, Sherco wins the most important trials race in the world, the Scottish Six Days of Trials and with a rider that you might recognize. The one and only Graham Jarvis. Yes, that Graham Jarvis. He ended up winning the race with Sherco three more times. Sherco was actually the winner of this legendary race for four years in a row, also with the victories of Juan Pons and Sam Connor. In 2002, Sherco acquires HRD and joins the Enduro and Supermoto segment with a 50cc two-stroke engine and a 125cc four-stroke engine. They also expanded the company's production capabilities by building a second factory in Nîmes, France, where the headquarters is currently located. Two years later, Sherco becomes the first manufacturer to introduce the 450cc and 510cc four-stroke fuel-injected enduro bikes. My father, for example, on product was to do uh, different things. He started, imagine, with a 450 four-stroke injected. It was yeah. possible to start with a, a bike, a two-stroke for Carby. No, yeah. no, no, with a 450 four-stroke injected. The first injected engine off-road in the market. Oh, really? I didn't know that. Yeah, before anyone. And we are not speaking about uh, six months in advance. We are speaking about months in advance, uh, years in advance. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Andro Colina, also a trials athlete in his days, was one of Sherco's most influential shareholders. 
he was very respected for its valuable inputs on the brand's management and still has a deep connection to the story of the company. However, he ended up leaving Sherco in 2008. It was the same year that Graham Jarvis put on a show again by winning the world's toughest hard enduro rally, Red Bull Romaniacs, on a Sherco 450 four stroke. The only reason that uh, Graham uh, uh, stopped with, uh, with Sherco is because we had not two stroke at that time, that's it. Really? It's the only reason. Only reason. Uh, with, the, right with the hard enduro? With the hard enduro? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, because uh, he started with a 450. After yeah. With two different four stroke. At that time, they were with 450, like in Erzberg with big bike. And finally, they switched to two stroke. And uh, in uh, in extreme enduro on a long race, yeah. uh, you need to have a 32 stroke. And we are not this product on the line. Jarvis moved on, but the company kept developing. A year and a half later, in 2013, Sherco finally launches the SE range with the 250 and 300cc engines. Easy to maintenance. Um, my argument was uh, you can change your piston and clean your car be alone. That's it, that's a two-stroke. In the meantime, Sherco also continued with the acquiring spree. In 2009, the company acquires Scorpa after declaring bankruptcy. Funny story, Scorpa is a trials bike manufacturer that was co-founded by Marc Tessier. However, Mark left Scorpa when his business partner didn't agree in critical business decisions and founded Sherco. However, Mark always had a sweet spot for Scorpa, so he didn't want the brand to die. The first decade of Sherco was filled with important achievements, but it is from 2010 on that Sherco really starts making an impression in the off-road competitions. Stay tuned, there's more to come.